So I know that we did chapter four right before break, but since it's been a little while, I just want to take some time to go over it um, again. So the way that I'm going to do these lectures is I'm going to have a PowerPoint presentation um, and I will post this on Schoolology, but there'll be a recording for each individual section. So that way we're not running the risk of having a, um, any video that's going to be over an hour long. Um, at max, I'm hoping that each individual section will be between 10 and 20 minutes. Um, they might run up to 30, but on some of the longer sections, but I'm really hoping to keep them shorter. That way we can segment our learning and we don't have to pause and then pick up again where we might have left off. So we're going to do 4.1 here. And again, it will be a little bit faster just since we've already covered this material in class. In 4.1, we're talking about mental math and estimation. Um, and we work a lot with compatible numbers. So compatible numbers are gonna be numbers whose sums, differences, products, or quotients are easy to compute mentally. Most of the time, it's gonna make the most sense to make compatible numbers be either multiples of 10 or multiples of five, just because those are easier for us to compute mentally. So let's jump into um, addition and subtraction. When we're adding or subtracting numbers, we're gonna do what is called compensation. So essentially we're creating compatible numbers by adjusting the actual numbers in a sum or difference. And I'm gonna do a couple examples off to the side here. And we're gonna start off with a sum. So let's say we're looking at 28 plus 25. One way we could do it is we could do the typical um, eight plus five gives us 13, carry the one, two, two, and one gives us 53. Um, but I wanna find an easier way to do it because hopefully on the assessment for this chapter, we do keep our calculators away for some questions. Um, it is important that we learn mental math strategies just so we can be able to teach them in the future. So if we're doing compensation, I'm going to look at that same problem two different ways. So I have 28 plus 25. One way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to look at that 28. I want to make it a multiple of 10. So to do that, I'm adding 2. And what I do to one part of this equation, so here I added, I'm going to do the opposite to the bottom part. So here I'm going to subtract 2. And this is going to give me 23. Notice if we add, we're still going to have that same 53 as before. Another way we can do it is we can make both of our add-ins be multiples of 10. So before, again, it's 28 plus 25. I can make 28 into 30 by adding 2. And I can make 25 into 30 by adding five. So I have 60 here as a sum, but we've added seven extra. So what I'm gonna do from that 60 is I'm gonna subtract the seven that I added. So notice again, I have that same 53. I'm gonna clear the screen and do an example where we're finding a difference. So let's look at 81. Oops, hold on, let's go back a second. Let's look at 81 minus 29. Remember before what we did is we added two to one part and then we had to subtract two to the other. This is gonna be similar. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, well, how can I make one of these be a multiple of 10? So I'm gonna add one to this 29 to make it 30. And when I do the one part, I have to do the opposite to the other. So I'm not actually changing any values of my difference here. So I added one on the bottom. So on this way, I'm gonna subtract one from the top and notice I have 80. So I'm gonna have 50 here. But we know that that is not the correct answer, right? Because 
what we have over here, if we're doing it our other way, 81 minus 29, this would be 11 and this would be seven. So now we have 52 as our answer. What we're doing is we're gonna take this and we've worked with a factor of two. So we have to add that on at the end. So it's a little bit backwards um, compared to what we did in sums. But we're making both of our numbers again, multiples of 10. I'm gonna clear this screen. And let's move on to multiplying. So when we're multiplying and we're looking to do mental math, there's three different ways that we can do this. So we can rearrange the factors, we can do front end multiplying, and we can think of them as if they're money. So let's go ahead and do a couple different problems here. I'm gonna look at rearranging the factors first. So for rearranging the factors, let's say that we're looking at a problem like seven times five times nine times two. We could multiply this left to right, but it's gonna be a little bit more difficult, right? We would have seven times five is 35. We're taking that 35 times nine and then times two. But remember those properties where it doesn't matter the order that we're multiplying. So I can change the order and I'm still gonna get the same product. So what I think is easiest is to always try to identify some multiple of 10. So I'm gonna take five times two times whatever's last here, which is seven times nine. I know five times two is 10 and seven times nine is 63. And then now I'm left with 63 times 10 or a product of 630. So just by changing the order that we're multiplying, we can find the same product easier than if we did it just multiplying left to right. Let's clear the screen and talk about front end multiplying. I really like to visualize this one. So now I'm doing front end multiplying and I'm gonna show two examples for this one. Um, the first one I'm going to look at 53 times 5. Notice what it says here is that we're multiplying each place digit separately and then adding the results. The way I look at this one is I have a one digit number times a two digit number. So I'm going to set that up in a rectangle. I know 53 is 50 plus 3. And I know that I'm multiplying that by five. So now what I can do is I'm gonna take five times 50. That's gonna give us 250. Then I'm gonna take five times three. So I have 15 here, and I can add those up to find our product. So 250 plus 15 gives us 260. I'm gonna show another example, but the next example is gonna to go to a three digit number. So here I'm gonna have 624 times seven. I'm gonna set it up the same way. So I will have 600 plus 20 plus four, and I'm multiplying that by seven. I like to think of it like a battleship or like a grid. I'm taking the 600 times seven, so I have 4,200, seven times 20 gives me 140. And then seven times four is 28. Same thing as before, I wanna add all of these up. Eight, six, three, four. And that is gonna be our product. Clear this and then move on to thinking about our numbers as if they're money. Um, obviously, that's going to work best if we have multiples um, of five, like a nickel, 10, like a dime, 25, like a quarter, and um, we could think of half dollars and dollars. And that's going to make this multiplication a little bit easier. So, if we do not have those numbers, 
um, or multiples, it's going to be best to do one of the other multiplying um, strategies. So now we're working with thinking that it's money. I have two examples that I'm going to put up here. So example here, and then I'll do another example down on the bottom. Let's say that we were looking at 34 times five. Well, I have this five that I'm looking for, so I can think of it as money. I tend to not want to work with nickels just because I think that it's a little bit more tedious than thinking about it as if it were dimes per se. So I know that a dime is double the value. So I only need half of the same number um, as my other factor. So 34 times five is gonna be the same as 17 times 10. And now we know that if I have 17 dimes, I have $1.70 or 170. The same thing applies if I was looking at a problem like 18 times 50. Well, I know that if I were looking at 50 cents, two half dollars make a dollar. So I can make this 100 or $1 times nine. So I can see now that I would have $9 or essentially since we are not actually talking money here, it would be a product of 900. 